As Aldous Huxley once said, man is an intelligence in servitude to his organs. Made from the same stuff as algae, the human body has evolved into the most complex organism in the universe. An animal with power of introspection, conceiving complex metaphysical notions of morality, beauty, and love, while at the same time battling time, illness, and even death with even more sophisticated scientific weaponry. While we may still marvel at its complexity, what do we know about the human body? What are its wonders and limitations? And with scientific and medical technology moving ever forward, how will the human body evolve over the centuries to come? To discuss these questions and more, I'm joined by Stephen Merchant, award-winning writer and graduate of the University of Warwick. Hello. And Carl Pilkington, a man without formal academic qualifications or any awards to speak of, but he's good at other things. Cleaning windows, for example, with his fucking tongue, Gump. <laughs> <laughs> a bit harsh, isn't it? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All your cells um, die and are replaced many times over in your life, um, except the brain cells. You only lose them. You lose hundreds and millions and trillions, right? And you've still got plenty left, don't worry, or most people have. Um, so only a small percentage of the cells you're born with remain yours, the brain cells. So supposing you're 99% different all the time you're changing. Is that the same person? Well, you'd say, yeah, because you've got the important ones, the brain cells, which keeps your memory, your personality, your input, the you. But, but then, as we've talked before, if you ch if you took your brain and put it in someone else, would you yeah. be the same person? You know, well, then, so yeah, what well, defines the person? Yeah, yeah it's the, the brain, isn't it? That, it that is the is brain, but then if you look different, you'd be treated differently and you have a different personality. You could still be the same person, but people change anyway. People's personalities change. And if you're in a car accident and you lose all your memories, you, you, you've got the same hardware. Uh, people have had complete personality changes. Particularly if we got, I knew someone who knew someone whose, uh, yeah, girlfriend was in a terrible accident and she lost uh, a lot of her memory. And so the person she was with, her boyfriend or fiance, she no longer related to them in the same way. And equally, he, obviously, that, that wasn't the same woman that yeah, you but was it his fault? With. Was it his fault? Wasn't his what's fault? that no, got to do with it? What's that got to do with it? No, was it his fault? Was the accident his well, what's fault? what's that got to do with it? Because you would be fed up, wouldn't you? That's a completely different point that he was making. No, it wasn't. He said yeah. a woman had an accident. Yeah, but we were talking about, are you the same person? Well, like, let's hear what Carl's point Go is. On. You said, yeah. you know this woman was yeah. in an accident. Yeah. It's terrible, that. It's sad. Yeah. Now, all I'm saying is she went- opinion just popped in there. She- yeah, well, that's sad. Yeah. She went off him- I'll pass on your condolences. Yeah. She went off the fella. Yeah. All I'm saying is, you're saying, oh, it's because a brain had a knock and went, oh, I'm not into him anymore, but all I'm saying is, <laughs> if it was his fault who was driving the car and yeah. it happened because of him, mm. you would sort of go, Yeah, but that's not the point I was making at all. It's not, it was, it? It, it's A, not, he wasn't not. involved, but B, it was because she got a form of amnesia, so she, she didn't relate to him in the same way because the life they'd spent together, she no longer had a memory of, and equally, when he was talking to her, she was no longer the person that he'd first met. Do you see what I mean? So that's what my point was. Not because he was in. Oh. Yeah, no, I can understand that. That doesn't surprise me that much, I suppose. At the end of the day, it is what you go through, isn't it? Yeah. You can arp back. You can talk about stuff. Uh, Arp back. You can arp back. Is that what a good relationship is based on? If there's a, a lot of young people out there listening, they're wondering what to look for. I, I think that's the best thing about getting old, isn't it? You yeah. can sit down and do nothing but think about a lot. If you're a baby, you've done now, you're lying there, you can't walk. I can't remember being a baby, and I put that down to it being boring. Because <laughs> <laughs> you only remember the you good can't things. You remember your birthday! No, it's, it's, you remember the good things in life, don't you? I'm quite happy, I can sit down for a good hour or so, and just think back and go, oh, that was good. When was the last time you reminisced? Well, my mum and dad have been round, haven't they, so, been yeah. reminiscing a lot. Yeah. Um, what were you thinking about? We were just chatting about, um, Tic Tacs. <laughs> One of the great memories, yeah. The happy memories. <laughs> no, because I, you see, here's, here's the thing, you're saying how that woman changed mm. when she had her head caved in. <laughs> I, he never said that. What did you, well, the, the brain accident. Yeah, um, brain accident, yeah. The, the, the Tic Tacs. Mm. Now, I used to love them. Yeah. When I was younger. Yeah. yeah. My dad got a load of them. Mm. What, got, this year? No, just no, recently. years ago, oh, years ago, like, right. years ago okay. when I loved them. I said, I love Tic Tacs, me. Yeah. yeah. He met one of his mates. He didn't nick him from the sweet shop? No, no. No, that's no he did. knew yeah. some mate who, uh, who could get his hand on a load. Right. And, uh, he must have got about, he, he must have got about 30 crates of Tic Tacs. 30 crates of Tic Tacs? Honestly, mm. we'd have about 24 on each crate. We got them, stuck them in a cupboard. 
under the uh, just in the kitchen, the corner. Yeah. <laughs> now I worked my way through about six crates. It's quite happy. When? How, in how long? I don't know. In about two weeks, three weeks or something. Right. And then uh, after that, I'm getting sick of these. Right. Yeah. You were minty fresh, but yeah, you're oh, sick lovely of lovely fresh breath. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I haven't got that much more to tell you about it. It's just. Well, just, just this, sorry, whoa, whoa, whoa! Bear in mind, this was something he was recently reminiscing with his parents <laughs> yeah, about. No. They were sat round, and we've already learned up to an hour could go by reminiscing. <laughs> sat round yeah. for an hour and oh, just talking about the, the I've great I've already run out of sorry, responses. I've yeah. got nothing to say about no, that. Opinion, I mean, I was nearly going to say, "What do you do with the empty little flicky tic tac boxes?" Yeah. But then I mean, you realise that that's utterly dull and boring. Uh, well, and not I, just, I was struggling. I don't know what this anecdote is, other than a yeah. bloke. Other than you said your dad, I like tic tacs, me. He went, "All right, I talked to." Albert, Albert, you got Tic Tacs? I've got 30 crates, if that'll do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll bring him around, put him under cupboard. He's got through 12 crates. What's his breath like? Fucking lovely, but he's been sick all over the cunting place. Oh, do you want some more? No, cause me fucking down. You'll talk about that in a few years' time. Cause me real for about a fucking hour. No. And then we bring it up in an audio book. Well, that's, I think that's how we got onto it, because even though I, tr I tried to get rid of a load, I used to give them to mates, take them to school, say, have some Tic Tacs. Yeah. You can have them for free. We used a load in the cat litter tray. <laughs> no. No, no we you did. didn't. We did. It no, was just didn't. ways of getting rid of them. Jesus Christ. Sort of freshy, sort of freshy smell, isn't it? Well, it's the same amazing. sort of condensity in that, isn't it? Condensity. It is the same condensity. Um, same condensity. <laughs> yeah, so I got rid of them like that. And then uh, the weird thing was, even though I'd got shut of them all, um, you'd be vacking up and you'd always hear one ting its way up the tube. <laughs> It's tinging its way up the tube. It's tinging its way up the tube. It's tinging its way up the tube. Ding tong, ping pong. It's tinging its way up the tube. That sounds like something from Willy Wonka. <laughs> oh god! No, it's just I'm just demonstrating that because that's how many of them there were around the house. You'd drop them, mm. they'd go in every corner and that, like Pac-Man mm. or something. They'd be that's everywhere. You'd be vacuuming up. Tinging it Sheila's up. getting married. How to get confetti? Don't buy any confetti. Go to cupboard under stairs. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's a little memory there, isn't it? It that is a little memory. No, it's, it's a, a really th little memory. Th the strange Tic Tac house in yeah. Salford, where everything is made of Tic Tacs. Wow, that must have been a hell of that's a incorrect. hell of a time you had with your parents there. Oh. The old Tic Tac reminiscence. No, but it's better. You see, you're you're saying, oh, what a boring story that is. Yeah. But when uh, when I your mum uh, regravelled the drive, <laughs> yeah, smell it. <laughs> suck, suck the drive if you want. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's different. When my mum and dad are there and they can remember that and they're going, oh yeah, yeah, the Tic Tac incidents and stuff. <laughs> What's known as the Tic Tac incident? <laughs> the Tic Tac let, incident. Let us never speak of the Tic Tac incident. Yeah, I just imagine the clock ticking. There, it's Christmas Day. I go, what are you smiling at? Oh, I remember it used to ting up the tube. <laughs> <laughs> you should think about sending this to Hollywood. Listen, what do you remember then? <laughs> what, what do, do you I remember? remember? That's wow. an amazing thing to That's say. That's a difficult question to answer. Yeah, I don't. Nothing. Nothing at all. Why, out of interest though, and this is, this will sound naive, why don't we remember <laughs> the very early moments of our lives? Why, why is it, is it, is it because it would be too harrowing to remember the point at which we, uh, Sort of born because I don't really remember anything from those first few years. Why? Why is it? Is it just because the brain's not fully formed at that moment? Uh, I don't know. The memory's not sufficiently uh, I, developed. I, 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 honestly, it's got to be trauma, on it. It's the things. Again, we were talking about me being younger, and the youngest I could remember back to was nineteen seventy-eight. How old were you then? Uh, when were you born? Seventy-two. What? You, can only, you couldn't remember earlier than six. Um, you can remember back to about two or three, most people. What? You no, no way, no way. My mum and dad don't even remember them <laughs> <laughs> because you're not doing anything. This is what I'm saying. My mum and dad don't even remember me then. <laughs> That's amazing. Because oh they, God. they, they, they oh, pinpoint they things. All the tic tacs they've ever eaten. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember when Carl was uh, six? Of course I do. <laughs> yeah. Five. Yeah. Four. <laughs> oh, yeah. Three. No. <laughs> Two? No! <laughs> because you're not doing anything, are you? <laughs> my mum and dad don't even remember so, me then! And, and it's oh. weird. I remember, s must have been about two, sitting on a potty surrounded by Lego. I remember that, very st strong image I have of that. No. I don't remember that. No, you no, wouldn't no, remember no, that, no, no, were you? No, would no, you, no, you, you weren't there, were you? What do you mean? What, you don't remember Steve sitting on a potty <laughs> surrounded by Lego? No, I mean, I can't remember having a potty. I remember having well, one you, of them. I'm not suggesting no, you have the you same memory. You used to go in a fucking litter tray. Now I know why to eat a Tic Tac while you're having a shit. But, okay, um, so what is your very first memory? 
The one that cropped up the other day was having my eyes sort of uh, glued together by um <laughs> Gangsters, <laughs> where's the fucking tic tacs? No, I we was... lost our truck for you. Yeah. <laughs> when, I, when I was on holiday and I slept near the window, and the window was open, and I used to wake up in the morning with my eyes shut. My mum and dad thought I was having a lovely lie in. I just couldn't open my eyes. But more, I don't understand. Why were they? Why were they glued? Why were they? What do you mean they wait, were glued? Wait, but just... why did you say, mum, dad? <laughs> I'm not asleep. My eyes are glued together. It's just you get a build up on yeah. the on the eyelashes. Yeah, yeah. And it all. It... <laughs> And you could sense them looking at I didn't know they were there. <laughs> but what do you mean? Why didn't you say to us, so you lay there dead still? Well, you should have sprinkled some Tic Tacs around the bed and you'd have heard them <laughs> crunching in as they came in. Yeah. Oh, what do you mean? So, so that's, you, that's your me eyes... Are, wait. So your eyes are stuck together. You're lying there. You're still. You're awake, but you can't open your eyes, so you don't say anything. Yeah. Well, why? What, what every so day? Your, it your happened memory a lot. It happened a lot. But your memory was that that this was scary to you because you thought I'd gone blind. You'd gone blind. Probably, and it hasn't happened since. So it's something you remember happening, isn't it? <laughs> it's like the kidney stone thing that mm. will always stay with me because it's like I was in agony. Yeah, right. and that's what I'm saying about trauma. It's quite frightening when you're a no, kid. No, you were saying your eyes. So we don't you, remember. You were trauma. saying you don't remember trauma. No. Oh. <laughs> Do you, well, remember, that, do you remember that traumatic. conversation we had a few minutes ago? Maybe it's because they had time to lie there and think about it. Because I, I sort of wonder that if, if having vision <laughs> does get in the way. Mm. No, that's a good one. Okay, go, go on, interesting. Yeah, interesting, yeah, go on. Well, yeah. just your eyes, your eyes mm. are, you know. Go on. Um, what are they? They're the, they're the thing mm. that makes you do the things you want to do, aren't they? Your eyes what do you at mean? the end of the what day. What do you mean, interesting? Go on. Could be a, could everything, be... everything. You might want to, yeah. you might like drawing. Right. Your eyes. Mm, that's an example, though, isn't it? Because then you might like music, and you don't need your eyes for that, do you? Um, well, you yeah, ideas. because you yeah. still got to find your way to the record shop to well, find the, well, the record no, no, you want. Because you know, someone could um, put it, put it for you. We could. Uh, um, what I mean is, your eyes. Wonder, say, doing? say rather you than. Might like um, smells. You might be like perfume. You need let you, me just think. The nose, don't you? Wine tasting. Just. I've just always thought. Mm. Blind people. Go on. Are probably good listeners. Right, yeah. That okay. makes sense. Yeah. Yes. Which means that they'll be more brainy. Possibly. They won't waste their eyes on watching rubbish telly. No. Yeah, sure. Um, but bear in mind, you learn a lot, don't you? Yeah, just from yeah. what you see. You Swings absorb a lot of information Swings from what you see. Notes. Yeah, but, but blind people are going to say, right, I'm not going to be defeated here. Mm, right. I'm going to make sure that I still feed my brain with stuff. Right. Whereas if you've got eyes, your eyes can sometimes say, well, don't listen to that intelligent thing there. Yeah. Watch some rubbish on the telly. Yeah. yeah. Why are you, your eyes are saying that, are they? Who are they talking to you? Are they talk I'm just saying, if you've got eyes... Yeah, they're talking to you. You're more drawn to things drawn that keep to, you... What are you drawn to, keep, though? Keep your eyes, keep on, your eyes you interested. It's like everything. Right. It picks your food for you. Mm. Does it? No, yeah, it does. It, it does. Of course, it does. That's why they advertise food in a way that the look, those adverts on the telly look so, at this. This isn't an ordinary pasta. Yeah. It's, it's, so yeah, you well, you'd eat a nice uh, a nice plastic apple, would you? It looked like a lovely. It looked like an apple. Eat it. Presentation mm. is ninety percent of what goes on now in this world. Mm -hmm. Whether it's clothes, is that is that a statistic that you picked that's up That's because somewhere? you know what the thing you like looks like, so you recognise it. You go. Oh, I like that. You don't go, oh, I like the look of that. I ate it last time and I like the look of it as I was eating it. You go, I know what that is. That's the thing that tasted good. Not always. No? I think there's a lot of cakes out there and I've I've been conned where my eyes have gone, that looks good. I'll go, can I have one of them? And I get it and it's just like air with cream on it. But that's there's nothing. You, you, there's are no you curious with your eyes at that point? But well, you just contradicted annoying. your own point. No, I haven't. I've said, my eyes, I've said this is what you want. Yeah. And I've been disappointed with it. So they, uh, so your eyes shouldn't pick your food then, should they, really? They you shouldn't. Should... No. But they do. Well, again, the next time you, you, you get the eyes go again, remember well, that? Would... Yeah, but I'll, I'll say, I'll sort of go, hang on a minute, you remember <laughs> last time? This is different. You are the strangest it's, it's man not, not I've weird. ever met. There's nothing weird about you that. You are the strangest person not, I've ever met. So are you mistrustful of your eyes? You, you don't are. trust anything you see now, you query here's, here's it. A a clearer, here's a clearer way of describing it. Go on. Holiday brochure. Right. Your eyes, look at it. Look mm. at this villa here. Look at that, it's got its own pool, close to all the amenities. <laughs> Get there, my eyes 
What have you picked? Because it's not what? as Who's good. Who's arguing now? Who's angry with your eyes? Your, were your eyes angry then? No, I was angry. Okay, so your mouth and brain are angry with your eyes? Because one, my nose has kicked in, I'm next to the bins. Right, okay. You <laughs> couldn't see that in the brochure, no, the eyes couldn't see that's that. That's true, true, true. <laughs> the bottle banks again, they're close by, my ears are going, what's the racket? Yeah. My eyes are going, sorry. What? Your eyes are saying sorry? I'm just saying, I you can't trust your eyes. The eyes. I, I love this. Yeah, I'm surprised they felt guilty. I love the fact that his, his sense of human biology is based on the numbskulls. Of course. I don't, I don't yeah. know why you, you must pick stuff based on what your eyes thought initially. Well, it depends. But Carl, they're not detached in this separate way. They're not different operatives, all with different agendas. It's all connected. It should be. If I look at a picture in a, a brochure or a magazine, and I think, oh, that looks nice, my brain instantly says, be careful though, because that's a publicity, uh, tool, mm. in order to try and sell me this particular deal. It's prob- chances are it doesn't look exactly in real life like it does in the brochure. Mm. I'm instantly thinking that. I'm not, I'm not going, hey, I'll book that. And then two weeks later I get there, I can't believe I'm fucking disappointed. Ears, what do you make of it? Well, I'm livid because I can hear some fucking racket. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is you don't see that many disappointed blind people. You mm. don't see that many disappointed blind, blind people. They're not let down that much. They're not let down. Spurious. You've got, that's no, you've got no information for that, no evidence for that at all. You've just made that you up. You don't see many disappointed blind people. I've always been fascinated in biology in general. And uh, I remember when I was about 13 or 14, I got this book, Man's Body, an Owner's Manual. I was fascinated buy it. It's like a sort of textbook, is it? About it's, the it's great though, because it's got absolutely everything from, you know, um, life and death. And then I was worried that you could chart when you die from sort of things like, you know, where you were born, socioeconomic group, um, have, you, have you had fill-ins and all that. I was like, oh, I'd, I'd worry it and you give yourself point system. But um, it's a fascinating book. It's got everything. And of course, all the stuff about male sex organs, you know. Um, I, I, I can't think of the number of men that went home and got a ruler after <laughs> reading about averages. Yeah. Um, uh, as a, there's a nice little um, chapter here. What is the average? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you have to push really hard with the ruler until it's sort of like going right into your stomach and then you can get it up to like two or three inches. <laughs> um, lovely chapter here on um, sexuality. I want to read one. Um, this is under the uh, homosexual activities. Um, it goes into what they like. Uh, Anal sex, it explains what that is. It's, um, anal sex. This is inserting the penis into the partner's anus. Um, normally with the aid of an artificial lubricant, so it gives you all the details there. Um, now, in addition to anal intercourse, many homosexuals have practiced fisting, inserting a hand or fist or other objects into the anus as a form of sexual stimulation. Experience has shown, however, that this practice should be avoided since it can cause gay bowel syndrome. No, I'd never heard of that. Wow. Gay yeah. bowel syndrome. Gay bowel syndrome. Um, fissures, like lesions and stuff, and other damage to the walls of the rectum. So, um, you'd go to the doctor and go, oh, I've got a problem with those. Well, you've got, uh, gay bowel syndrome. Are you, uh, gay? Yes, I am. Yeah. All right, um, well, have you, have you been, have you been sticking another man's fist up your anus? Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we like that. Okay, well, uh, my advice to you is to stop that because, um, it's causing damage. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to stop it, by the way. I'm not going to stop it. I'm going to carry on doing that. And then just keep coming back here with a sore ass, if that's if that's all right. And you can just fix it, can you? Because uh, I'm just going to... In fact, I'm going to go home now and do it. Even though you've told me that I probably shouldn't. And I'm going to... Gay bowel syndrome, you say? <laughs> Carl, what, do you, what do you think about that? Sticking a, a, a fist up your ass? Uh wasn't meant to be, was it? I mean, it's, it's, it's not, you know, it's gonna do damage, isn't it? It's, it's like, you've gotta know when to stop putting stuff in a carrier bag. <laughs> and it's the same as that, isn't it? Cause it rips. Yeah. Someone told me this recently at a party. Uh, fascinating fact. Um, see what you think of it, Carl. He told me that, apparently, if you've got time on your hands, you can put your fist inside someone else's arse and then you can work your hand very slowly up through the person's body it takes about two hours apparently and eventually it's he's, he's what he told me you can touch that person's heart right right and it's like the most intimate thing you could ever do with right. someone else that's bollocks that's what he said that's what well, how could you said. touch their heart one the alimentary canal is about 30 foot long so you'd have to either have to have 30 you have to be mr tickle 
right? Or you'd have to be rolling up the elementary canal as you go, like a like a stocking on a pole, <laughs> right? And then when you get up there, how can you touch the heart? You'd have to rip through the esophagus, which would kill them. Okay, if the if the arm going all the way up there, elementary canal, the wrong way didn't kill them. But I like the idea of someone saying that to a loved one. <laughs> all right, love. <laughs> Love, little surprise for you. Um, the kids are at your mother's. Yeah. Um, I've, I've, I've put, I've put the phones hours. off the hook. They're yeah. out for two hours. They, they, actually, they better be out for four, because I'm going to need to get it back out again. Yeah. Where's the Marge? <laughs> it's like, imagine the, the doorbell goes, you've got to sign for a package. Who told you that at a party? A psychopath. I don't know. He's, he's, and then he was convinced it was true, because he, he went online to try and, uh, even when we were at a party, he found a computer also, and he started typing in fist, heart, stuff. And I said, you better delete that in case yeah. the person whose computer I is, know, finds fist, that. Heart, fist yeah. heart. Also, if the aim is to touch the heart, right, go via the mouth, it's shorter. <laughs> Let's pop it down the mouth. Yeah. Kyle, thoughts? I mean, there's getting to know people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you know how people say, oh, you shouldn't use a toilet with the door open and all that mm. because it ruins. What, like, the you knowing too much and everything, but that for me, where do you go from there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I've, you know me, I mean, I've got nothing against, uh, gays and that, but no. I have, I've, I, they puzzle me to this day. There's still things that happen when, uh, I go, what is all that about? Like what? I went to, what's the name? Mm. Harley Street. I went for a, a check-up. Mm. And, uh, like a medical. Posh, you know Harley Street. It's like yeah. it's the top doctors, isn't it? I've never yeah, been before. Yeah. All posh buildings and that. I uh, went up to the counter. I said, uh, "I see the doctor." They said, "Name, yeah." Right. Give us ten minutes. Go and wait in the waiting room. Dead posh waiting room. Dead fancy. Big leather furniture and that. Yep. Loads of magazines. I mean, like a, like a news agent yep. in the middle of the room on a table. Loads of them. So I'm looking through, and there's the you know there's the top quality ones. Your Esquire. You know, GQ, Classy, Yacht Weekly, uh, all that, Country Life, uh, Boys. Boys? It's one there, yeah. Boys. What's that? Right, lifted up like the one on top of it, and it's like Boys with a Z. Two fellas stood there, looking, uh, sort of Italian looking. Ah, uh, yeah. Right. Uh, remember Brother Beyond? That sort of look. Right. <laughs> yeah. Sort of greasy air. It's a cracking reference there. Um, dungarees on. Uh, no shirt though. No shirt, just dungarees sort of unbuttoned, hanging down a little bit. Sure. So no one else is about. I'm never going to buy a magazine like that. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you're going to tell us you look through you a couple of magazines. I had, I had a little little look just because I thought, you know, like I say, you, it's one you're chance. You're always looking to learn, aren't you? You're always <laughs> looking to learn. Yeah. Always open, you know, there might have been something in there that I go, right, I get it now, I understand why, why they like doing that or whatever. Yeah. Right. So uh, she said I was going to, you know, ten minute wait, I can, I can have a quick flick through. Mm. Picked it up, had a look. Um, still none the wiser. Why? Well, what did you see when you opened it up? Um, just loads of, uh, I mean, like I've said to you before about, I don't know why be like looking at knobs when they've got one of their own. <laughs> right. There's no right. surprises there. You're not going to go. Oh, yeah, that's sure. That's yeah. Nice. Yeah. Lots of that. Yeah, they can't get to it, can they? They can't get to their own. Who can't? Well, if they want a little, little chew, a little nosh. They can't get to their own, can they? They break their back. But they can't get to this fella's in the magazine. <laughs> it's only a picture. They're just looking at it. They might as well look at their own. That's you what I mean. It, yeah. yeah, just have a look at it. They just stood there. They're not up to anything. They were just sort of stood there. Some had like car oil on the face. <coughs> uh, there was Why? one sat on a, I don't know, just like a mechanic type thing. Right. Car oil on the face and like rubbed on the chest and that. Sure. Not about. Yeah. There was someone sat on um, like a, a one of them square things of hay. Oh yeah. Sat there, like sort of sat on it, straddling it. Yeah. Uh, that must have been uncomfortable. Again, not about. Yeah, yeah. Just looking, just looking like it's normal. That's so crazy. Like no, that. no farmer walks around like that. What was the other one? There was a, uh, you know, motorbike. They always like them. Yeah. Now I'm going through, and and then like the content is all puns. Right. It's all you know. Uh, it's a couple of weeks ago. I should have wrote some down. It, it, it all everything was to do with knob. Right. That's the only bit they're interested in. <laughs> in the male body. Look at look at this bloke it's striding not, this huge throbbing. Thing, the bike's not bad either. Yeah, yeah all that, yeah. loads of them. Uh, it was just, uh, uh, just all, just, just cock, just 
hundred percent. Like, let's let's just talk about the knob. That's yeah. a good name for a, a, a gay magazine. Hundred percent cock. Hundred percent cock. Did it not at any moment, sort of, maybe slightly unnerve you that you might, the doctor might come in and see you reading boys? No, because I or wasn't. What about if I walked through? Because I remember once when you were in hospital, about to have um, a tube going down your knob, and you were sitting in your pants with stockings on, and I walked through, and you were horrified. So what if I'd have walked in then and went? Yeah, God, I would have just said, "Look at this." Look at this, it's free. And I, and you, and I said, why did you bring that with you? No, I would have just said, look, does it look like I brought it with me? Look yeah, at this. yes it does, because well, I've never, because so I would at... never see, you would never see a gay magazine in a doctor's waiting room. So I think you bought that and then, and pretended that it was that's, there. That's, that's the thing, that's, I was amazed by that. Because there was no like, you know, there was no Mayfair or anything. They just catered for like, if you wanted a bit of knob action. <laughs> It was really, I mean, really, I could have complained. Sure. So if you're going to have this, where's a bit of the other? Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah! You had a bit of this, where's a bit of the other? I know one of the things that, that they had, and I thought, they're, they're really struggling with, like, ideas. They had a Sococo. <laughs> <laughs> As in Sudoku? Yeah. Sococo. Sococo. Surely, surely Sudico is better. No, because it was like Sococo. Yeah, but it's dick as well. Subdico. Yeah. What, and it's, it was still a Sudoku style puzzle, but yeah, it just had that name. Yeah. Yeah, it's just so everything. Not, it it's was all just Sudoku, but called su Coco. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. Now, that if I if I was gay, do you know like let's have say, a game of Lubo. <laughs> <laughs> let's have a game of Knobopoly. Knoberation. Knoberation. <laughs> let's have a game of chess. Cock. <laughs> 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 Let's have a game of fuckaroo. <laughs> well, that works for either sex. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's how we spend okay, our Christmas. Then. Fuck a poo. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh god. Human intimacy is a very strange thing because kissing is a bizarre thing, isn't it? Really. I mean, I don't know what the evolutionary origin of kissing is. You know what I mean? It's quite a sort of strange... It's like anything it's though, isn't it? It's a strange thing. It's because you... if you start reading about all the weird stuff that goes on, like people who have it away with dead bodies and that, it's because you've, you've planted the seed in your head and you start going, oh, I'll give that a go. Like food. You either want an olive or you don't. Some people will go, I'll try it. Some will go, they're not for me. Do you want an olive? Uh, no, but you can shove your hand up <laughs> me ass so far to touch me up. <laughs> uh, you haven't got, you haven't, you haven't got any olives? <laughs> I have got some olives, but if you are fed up with olives, <laughs> yeah. I've got an arse here going <laughs> begging, and only, and, uh, 30 foot along the alley, because now it's a little hard, I like you to yeah, touch. But, but the thing is, if you, if you give that a go, and you enjoy it, then you want to do it again. Yeah. Right. And you've created stuff. Uh, do not stuff. try and do that. Do not try and stick your hand so far at someone's arse you can touch their heart. There is no point to it. It is a myth that it could happen. You will end up murdering it's someone. It's a sorry, sorry state of affairs where you've got to put that message out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's it, isn't it? That's the other thing, isn't it? That um, you don't hear of animal fetishes and animal phobias. You know, you don't you don't get a lion who's a little bit nervous of antelope. I don't like antelope meat. And yet you have people here who are, um, all those weird things of people who um, can only have sex with a pavement, which is a good thing to you know, you'll never be lonely unless someone suddenly drops you on a desert island and you go, I'll never see a pavement again. <laughs> Um, what do you think of that? Those, those people that just think, you know... Well, they're just idiots, aren't they? There are some weird... You know, you've got some clever ones, you've got a lot of divs. There's more divs on the world than better ones. <laughs> wow, that's a brief sentence to say. <laughs> yeah, he's right, though. He's right. As, as gobbledygook as that was, he's absolutely right. I, I, think, I, think, I think Carl isn't a div. I think he's a better one, but doesn't know it. I think he's... He, it's, it's strange, because I think that, um... He's got all the other evolution of the of the human being, but um, he doesn't know which side his bread's buttered. He's, he doesn't realise he's cleverer than he is. The number of times I find a theory that he said in gobbledygook, but it's true. I, I think that um, I just I think he's been dealt a bad hand mm. in the brain department. <laughs> Do you know sure. what I mean? Yeah. Thoughts, Carl. Well, your brain's in two bits, isn't it? Yeah. And I, I wonder if one half is really good, the other half's messing it up. 
<laughs> yeah, That's that could be the case. That could be the case. Yeah, well, it is split into two. Yeah, and they and they are, are responsible for different things. Yeah, it's like these sort of families where there's a kind of really bright kid, and then a sort of wayward child who just gets into drugs and stuff. Sort of like that up there. Yeah, in your head, because you have you have quite sort of out there nebulous thoughts, and you've got a lot of common sense, haven't you? And just having that uh, that other sense of like this is dodgy. What spider sense? Just that sense where you just go, I don't know why, but something's telling me we shouldn't be here. And you go, all right, let's go. <laughs> and you move from it, and you don't know what, what that is. Yeah. You don't know what's decided that. You know, it's like when you're lost. A part of my brain's got me lost, but then there's another bit that I don't know what it is where they go, go left. <laughs> And you do, and then you go, so th remember that time when you called me and I said I don't know where I am, and yeah. I couldn't concentrate? <laughs> think of that! Think of that! I called him! Oh my god, what are you doing? I don't know where I am. What do you mean you didn't know where you were? What, you I got lost. I, I what, went in wandering. London? You got yeah, lost? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went wandering, and then, uh, th you know, I It's was when like, he first moved into his new place, he was yeah. walking back from his old place to his new place, and he didn't know where he was. He tried to take a shot. How can you ever really get lost in London, though? I'm just asking um, Cabby. Well, yeah, yeah, I don't want to do that because you feel bad pulling one over and then saying, where am I? Um, <laughs> yeah, they don't appreciate that, do they? <laughs> but, um, I found my way back, didn't I? Yeah. But you told me one minutes. time that you, uh, that you, you much prefer getting lost. You love wandering around and getting lost. Yeah, you said that's much better. Yeah, yeah, it was cold a cold day, it was a cold day. I just wanted to be at home. I had things to do. There's mm. a time and place to be lost. Well, uh, when, go on. Oh, uh, well, a place What's you don't place? know. What's the place to be lost? Somewhere you don't know. Right, good. Okay, so And the time? the time? The time when, when you're not in a rush. Right. Uh, okay. But that time I was in a rush and, and I was cold. So a typical argument in your head is what? I'm lost. Um. I'll do one, I'll do one side of the brain, you do the other side of the brain, okay, in your head, okay? Carl. What? This isn't where we should be. You want to go home, didn't you? This isn't your house. Because it's a, it's a field. You live in a house, don't you? Why are we standing in a field? This isn't your house. You were meant to go home, but you've walked into a field. No, but that wouldn't. I've, I've never been that lost when I'm walking <laughs> across a field. At the edge of the field, I'd go, hang on a minute, this isn't right. I wouldn't get in the middle. I wouldn't go that far. I'd go, right, I definitely shouldn't be here. <laughs> you did once. You were in the middle of a field and your dad had to rescue you. Yeah, that's when I was a kid because I was reading as I was walking. <laughs> And he never read again. <laughs> <laughs> but there's another sense. I was in the middle of nettles there. Yeah. I'd walked. It was at uh, it was at my brother's wedding in Cornwall, mm. and I was walking near a cliff edge, <laughs> reading a book. <laughs> reading. And okay, so so uh, so okay. So <laughs> <laughs> Carl, I know you're enjoying this book. I've got, can I have a word with you? Just look. Just look past the book a minute. It's, it's just it's a big drop. Yeah. Well, that's what happened, and then right. that's when the other senses went. Hang on a minute, I'm being stung, load of nettles and stuff. And I just had to wait there for ages until my dad sort of thought, "Where's Carl?" I was there for about an hour and a half. <laughs> you showed a book. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me like a cartoon. But why are you wandering off reading a book when it's your brother's wedding? No, this was like we were in. Uh, I think it was Saint. I it's Saint Ives in Cornwall. Yeah. 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 I was in St Ives and uh, just, you know, it was a nice day and that. There was no telly in the place. It was a horrible house. Yeah. Um, it's this old, it was haunted, uh -huh. actually. Uh -huh. No, honestly. No, not honestly. It wasn't haunted. There's no such thing as ghosts. So, those, so you saying honestly it was haunted means fuck all. It's the most, it's the weirdest place and weirdest sensation I've ever had. I spoke to a woman called Mrs Battersby. Right. Uh, who sat on my bed keeping me up all night. My mum came up, she said, you look shattered. I said, yeah, I had a kip all night. She said, why? I said, I've been talking to Mrs Battersby. She said, who's that? I said, no, oh, some old woman. Now, I can't remember it now, but that's what I did then. And then, uh... Sorry, sorry, uh, so Mrs Battersby didn't exist, is that what you're saying? She was the ghost? Yeah. It wasn't the landlady? No, there was no landlady. It's a big house, about, right. about 12 bedrooms in it. Right. Dead, dead cheap to stay there, because it was a wreck. My mum and dad Ill? went were out you one Ill? night. Did you have flu at the no, time? No, I had nothing like that. I just... So you were sitting up, but you were awake. And you were having a conversation with Mrs. Battersby. <laughs> <laughs> what did she look like? I can't remember. I can't even remember having the chat now. Right, but so- at the time, I was like, oh, she just doesn't shut up. Chatting all night. So you don't remember this happening? Or you do remember it happening? No, I remember 
that, like, if I see my mum now and I mention St. Ives, she'll go, oh yeah, Mrs. Battersby. She remembers coming in, because she was older than me, wasn't she? So, to so her, my mum. Was she? Yeah. Oh, Mrs. Battersby. She was older than both she of you. She was older, because I'm calling her Mrs. Battersby. If she was my age, I'd probably say, oh, it's Susan or whatever. Right, sure. You'd call Ma older people Miss Battersby. by the surname, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Uh, anyway, so she kept oh, up on, like, I don't know, I'm thinking of pictures at the wedding. Uh why do you have to go through other things to just have a memory? How old do you reckon you why were? Do, why, I, I don't understand why you haven't got direct access to your memories. How old do you reckon you were? Uh, Your mum was older though, yeah? You must have a vague idea of when this well, event was. I'm thinking about it now, I'm thinking. Okay. I'm, I'm picturing a picture of myself at this wedding. Okay. And how old are you? What are you doing? How tall I'd say you? I look about... How were you? Uh, uh, I'd say I look about seven or eight, looking at the picture. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. So Mrs. Battersby is chatting away to you. You don't remember what she said, but you do remember having the conversation. No, he doesn't remember it at I all. I don't remember the chat now. Well then so why are you telling- it's you not must your remember memory. it because you're telling us about it's it. Because it's a memory. My mum's reminded me of it. Yeah, but all it says is- uh, oh, this is so far removed. This is hearsay that your mum said you spoke to a ghost once and you don't even remember the ghost. Mrs. But Battersby. No, yeah, you no, remember you the name, remember but because her. your mum reminded you of it. In a court of law, if there was a ghost court, they go hearsay, thrown out of court. <laughs> Right. You yeah. don't have a memory of Mrs. Battersby. No, look, I know that when I was a kid, yeah. I ate a beetle. <laughs> I ate a beetle because I thought it was licorice. <laughs> now, I can't remember that now. You can't remember that, but you you know it happened because your mother told you it happened. Exactly. Right. <laughs> but the fundamental thing is that we can <laughs> believe- memories. We can memories believe- We can believe you ate a beetle, well, because that is something that could happen in real life. But- What we're questioning is that you spoke to a ghost. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what sort of beetle was it? Just one of them standard beetles, just a <laughs> black shiny one. Thing is, right, a couple of years ago we were in the ivy and the food came and there's a big blob of wasabi, right? It was like a, a um, got a, a called an oriental hors d'oeuvre, right? And uh, I looked over at Carl and he started going, <gasps> drinking water. I said, what have you done? He said, I have that. I said, that was a blob of wasabi. He said, I thought it was one mushy pea. <laughs> <laughs> That's a classy restaurant, they serve serving one mushy pea. Well, they do that, don't they? Wow. Small portions. It's all trendy, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I love the fact that it's this, exactly the same thing. Yeah. They've swapped beetle for wasabi yeah. and licorice for pea. Uh, you see things, you see something, you it's think- It's a good job you remember that anecdote, though, because he does it. <laughs> Yeah, in years to come, we're going. It's some wasabi once. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Well, according to Ricky, I did. Yeah, I was in the ivy. I thought, I thought it were mushy pea. Uh. <laughs> so hang on, I just want to go back to Mrs. Battersby because what you other... confidently said, you confidently said uh, it, was it, was, it was haunted. It was the most haunted place. Yeah. But you've got no real evidence for it because even, even you claim you had this encounter. You don't even remember it. Yeah, but you don't remember everything in life. But you supposedly you? had a conversation with a ghost. I know, yeah. but I didn't know when I was younger. I but didn't you remember think that the was a specifics ghost. of an oh, ant so walking you, around. Yeah. So you thought, ah. Oh, so I see. If you'd have had the memory, it would just be a nice old lady on the end of your bed all night. Right. And then- it, it, th Then when I mentioned it, my mum was saying, what do you mean Mrs. Battersby? Who's Mrs. Battersby? Right. When you're a kid, you're not terrified, are you? No. Nothing scares you. I mean, you. I'm, I'm beginning to think who the fuck is Mrs. Battersby, I must admit, but- So, yeah, that was, uh, but it was a weird place. I mean, there was no telly. Right. Um, all they had for sort of company was a calculator. <laughs> 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 Carl, you're wow. the strangest little man that's, that's ever lived. Can't believe he had a company. Oh, no. There goes Carl with his friend. What's his friend? Oh, it's a, it's a little. It's a Sanyo 4197G. <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. Oh, calculator. Do that boobs thing again. <laughs> My mum and dad used to go Memories. out. I stayed in there. Just shots of him with his calculator, <laughs> his calculator. on the beach. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, it's Sunday. Maybe beautiful, Annie. Four yeah. plus sixteen. <laughs> what would it be? Carl, why are you friends? <laughs> calculator. Oh, God! Just imagine shots of him in Vietnam, he's carrying Tommy! Where the batteries, where the batteries tied the heads on the funeral for him. <laughs> his, his batteries are all over the floor. <laughs> oh, fucking hell! The only company was a calculator! Oh, I used to knock around with a brick! Oh, oh God! Oh, fuck me! Carl. The human body is one of the things that you're actually genuinely fascinated in. This is one of the things that you admit is is quite amazing, and um, I think we all agree with that. Here's some uh, quite incredible um, stats and facts about the human body. What do you think of this? Fifty thousand of the cells in your body 
will die and be replaced with new cells all while you're listening to this sentence. Go on. Well, that's it. What's the sentence? That was the sentence. Uh, what was the sentence again? <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. The sentence doesn't matter. 50,000 just dying and being replaced in that time. But what are they doing? Different cells do different things. Some are taste buds. Some carry haemoglobin and oxygen to other cells. Yeah. Some are skin. Some are liver. I've heard about skin. I've heard a lot of skin, sort of. What? Yeah. What you heard? Um, a rumour about skin. You heard about skin? What? It's just, it, it Keeps just... all your stuff from falling on the fucking floor? Well, it's, it's the thing that makes you what you are as well, doesn't it? More what than, do you mean? More than anything. Why? But without the skin, you're just a skeleton, you look all the same. No, you're not just a skeleton, no. Other than your lungs and your heart and your kidneys and stuff. What well, I'm saying is I, I know, went to I know that, all the flesh yeah. on top and all I, the blood vessels and I all I the... went to that bodies exhibition. Yeah. No, here we are. This is it. He, he knows all about the human body and science because <laughs> he went to the bodies exhibition. Do you know where the German fella cuts bodies up? Yes. Now, he had a load of people on show. Could have all been the same family. <laughs> because everyone, without the skin on their head, looks the same. Other well, than height, yeah. everybody looks exactly the same. And that's why racism is so stupid. Well, it's a good point. Good point, isn't it? Yeah. That's saying that, though, I did think most of them were Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> what made you draw that conclusion? Why? It's just the eyes. <laughs> I didn't have any eyelids! Honestly, if you've seen it, <laughs> it, it looks there's something that uh, and they're a bit mad, aren't they? They do all that endurance stuff, and I thought this is the ultimate way to that's go. Isn't it? I think that's, that's the Japanese, Japanese, yeah, just is completely, di yeah, completely different um, race, culture, country, nation. Right, well, mm. well, the Japanese then. I reckon they've donated their body to it. You started off saying you cannot tell anything about where they come from because they haven't got any skin. It was just the eyes. <laughs> Um, it didn't didn't occur to you. Or, I mean, was there not any information saying where the bodies were sourced for, from? They don't tell you. They just tell you that if you want to be part of an exhibition later in your life, mm. put your name down. And what did you learn about the body from this exhibition? Well, I told you. Um, you know, we we all look similar. At the end of the day, your skin is what makes people look different. Yeah, that's that's the bit that makes you look like you, doesn't it? Yeah. That's the bit that you can tell how old somebody is. Yeah, that's, that. what, that's what you recognise. You don't recognise what... someone's skeleton and their brain. Unless it's the elephant man. But then again, <laughs> with the skin on, I couldn't tell you how old he was. There's something about his head and everything that he's just, he's ageless. He could buy a packet of fags and be underage. He could get on a bus and say he's an OAP. I have not got a clue how old the elephant man was. There's no distinguishing things for his age, is no. there? But, with most people, it's it's the skin that does it. Strip all that away, and they were all stood upright as well. They were all they weren't sort of unched. Right, unched. They've been straightened up. Not unched then. Um, Is that the German bloke unched? But what did I learn? That's what you're asking me. Yeah, well, can, you can, I, can I answer that? Sure. Fuck all. Right. <laughs> oh, there we are. <laughs> The skin, of course, you are right in saying, is an extraordinary thing. I mean, it, it is un almost unlike any man-made item. It's one of the most waterproof things, obviously, one of the most durable, one of the most, uh, one of the strongest and yet stretchiest. I mean, yeah. it is a remarkable achievement. Yeah. Yeah. One um, square inch of skin, right, has four yards of nerve fibres. In what? In one inch? In one inch, square inch of skin. Mm. It's got uh, 1,300 nerve cells. And a hundred sweat glands in a in a square inch of skin, and three million cells, right? And three yards of blood vessels. Tiny, those tiny little things, and they make up three yards worth. But I understand you need the blood bit, but the nerves. I'd shorten the nerves. What do you mean? I wouldn't have as many nerves. I think uh, if I could change it. Well, it depends because there are different amounts per square inch. You've got less on the back of your hand than on the finger tips obviously and uh i think um i think the most nerve endings are n tip near of the your spine tip of the bit well that's probably going to be quite sensitive unnecessary isn't it in that in that um uh, unnecessary it is really why is it unnecessary because i'd say what you want i think you need them in your fingers because you're picking up hot stuff sure i've never put my knob somewhere that i thought i didn't feel that <laughs> <laughs> There's a quote. <laughs> There's a quote. <laughs> if you're sticking it somewhere bad, well, you shouldn't be, so it's your own fault, isn't it? Is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think it's just 
for your penis to be able to identify hot stuff. No. I think it's for other reasons why is it's it, super sensitive. It's, it's not. Is that hob hot enough for your suit? <laughs> well, well, hang on, let well, me just, just check not, I've got a thermometer here. <laughs> well, you don't need a thermometer. <laughs> well, no, 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 the thermometer's not accurate. Well, it is, it's a, it's a mercury thermometer. You know. Well, it, mm, you need some, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want a reading, I want a feeling. <laughs> no. No, you don't need it in that bit. Well, the penis is sensitive, I assume. Because of the sexual stimulation. Yes, because you? you need to- yeah, You don't need the nerves for that. Well, you do, yeah, because you need- Well, something needs to stimulate it, for it to know, to send a thing to your brain, and you go, all right, we're- we're mating here, we need to- we need to get half our genetic material to that egg. I lost him, didn't I? Yeah. When did I lose him, though? When you tried to explain how babies are born. <laughs> Carl, every human being spent about half an hour as a single cell. I've heard about that. What do you mean, you've heard about that? <laughs> I rumors. remember reading it. I, I read it. I think I went to the science museum and right. it was on the wall. And I just thought, oh, I would have hated that. What, being a single cell? For half an hour. But then when was there ever a chance of a single cell knowing anything? Yeah, if you look at it like that, it's not a problem, yeah. It never was a problem. Why are they telling us then? <laughs> oh, for God's sake. <laughs> this is a guide to. We're trying to educate. I mean, we, you know, we, we, this, this is for people to, you know, it, it's just an interesting discussion, isn't it? So there are gonna, we are gonna come up with some facts. There are gonna be some things that, um, we don't know the answer to. There's gonna be many things you don't know the answer to. Sometimes you're right. Sometimes you're wrong. Sometimes we learn something. Sometimes we don't. It's just adding to the debate, really. I just thought it was quite an interesting fact. Well, what do fact. you think when you read that? Um. What goes on in your head? Uh, I think it's incredible. That that's how it starts. That you One cell, from there to then it divides and divides a, again. A cognizant being. Yeah. That every cell knows what it's got to do. It's remarkable. It's remarkable. DNA. Stunning. Yeah, I'm surprised there's not weird, more weird stuff knocking around. I've always said that. But what's weird? Just something that isn't, doesn't look like the rest of us. Nothing looks like the rest of us. There's nothing, what's no, weird than- No, wise I mean. How many people are in the world? Six billion. Six billion. Six billion people. Yet, yeah, you don't walk down the street and I'd expect every fifth person to be like, what is that? Look at his head. He's got mm. three legs. Why? Why is the arm on the back of his head? Why mean, isn't there more defects in it? Well, there has been. Don't Not forget. Many. Do you know like that Total Recall? Yeah. Like that? <laughs> Where everyone's a little bit weirder. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, there's only so much you can do. I mean, even in that film, there was a woman with three tits. There's only, there's, <laughs> the, you know, I'm not talking about having like a, a shoe for a head. I'm just talking about <laughs> the like weirdness. A He's lazy, isn't he? <laughs> I just he'd like to see more. Shoe. He'd like to see more three-titted women. Is what you're saying? Yeah, one. We'd all like I mean, to see it doesn't that. matter. Mix it up. At least then it's a bit more of a surprise. What so, you're going to get? One giant boob. <laughs> and it's a shame because it does make the world more interesting. But what's more interesting than the world, you than see, the you're natural endlessly diversity? Bored. You're endlessly bored by the world as it is. We're amazed, we sit here amazed by these facts, by thinking about the cosmos. You're endlessly bored by it. Always looking for something new and weird and, and alien. Do you know, they, they've mm. estimated that there might be about five million species of animal, right? Mm. But they think there might be another 20 million all insects. So they've, they've stuck it about one, but they wouldn't be surprised if there's another 20 million species of insect. I wouldn't. Right, okay. Well, thanks very much. No, because you start off with the big stuff, don't you? If someone comes along, I mean, I'm still surprised when they say things like, we found a new dock, and I think, well, that's <laughs> not hard to find. <laughs> if you're talking about bacteria, I'd go, well done, where did you find it? No. That's the other way round. A new elephant? Wow, really? No. Where was that eyed in? No, I'd be annoyed new... that someone's, someone's not found it. If it's, it's not <laughs> my job to find new stuff. Right. So, it's not my problem. Right. But if someone's on the payroll, right. and they're out there trying to find new species, there's and they no, go, there's no we one found on the a new llama, I'd go, right. well, where's it? Where, where, what, why have you missed this? <laughs> right. <laughs> annoyed. Yeah. Not, wow, there's a new llama. <laughs> no, but it's, it's harder to find Attenborough. 
he's been out doing his job for years, hasn't he? Yeah. He was excited that he found a small frog. Yeah. He found a frog, he stuck it on his finger. He said, I've been looking for that for ages. <laughs> <laughs> And you could see he, he was- check under the microwave, down the back of the couch? He was delighted. Yes. He was chuffed. I was chuffed for him. He'd been yeah. looking for it for ages. <laughs> right. Now the thing is, respect due to him there. Mm. His eyes aren't as good as they used to be. Right. He found a small He's frog. been looking for it. He kept looking. I'd have given up if I was him. <laughs> but he kept looking, he found it. There it was, a little frog on the end of his finger. Right. It wasn't on his finger all along, was it? <laughs> <laughs> I've got more respect for him finding that, yeah. something so small, than someone else whose job it is to also be rooting around for new stuff coming round the corner with an elephant saying, look what I've got. I've been looking for this. Yeah, but that's not what happened. You haven't been looking hard enough. Then no one's looking for an elephant and has failed to find it. They don't You're know what they're looking for. You're these people yeah. who are on the payroll yeah. looking for elephants By and failed to find By definition, they're not looking for new species because they don't know they exist. It's a surprise. No mm. one goes out and goes, what are you looking for today? I don't know. Say a letter. D? Duck then. Let's look for a new duck. Where are you going to look? Pond. <laughs> All right. I know, but sometimes it's the slightest thing. I mean, we've done yes, a lot on insects. Yes, it is, But yeah. you go, I've found a spider with, like, a, an orange leg or a, a fish that swims upside down. <laughs> it's like, put it the right way up. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not worth, it's not worth noting. <laughs> I'd say what's, it's got to be a dramatic difference. <laughs> right. Uh, Right, You're such dramatic. a bag of contradictions. You'd be annoyed with someone who found a new elephant. You'd think that was a sizable uh, discovery, but no, that would piss you off because they should have found it before. They find a fish just swimming around upside down, put it out the right way. How, right, how different does the elephant need to be? It comes around the corner, you go, that's just like another elephant. How does it have to be different, right? How, what, what to you has to be different? To the point that I don't know it's an elephant. Well, that then, I go, like, like our hippos related to a whale. What would it like then? Uh Well, we're all related, all, we're all related. No, we're not, we're not, though. Yes, we, we are, That's yeah. a daft thing to say, that. No, we are all no, related, all it's related. just a matter of degrees. Um You understand what it means to be related to your brother, don't you? Yeah. So you understand what it means to be related to, um, uh, your cousin? Yeah, it starts getting a little bit... Really? Already at cousin? Already yeah, at there's, cousin? there's cousins I don't it... talk to. I haven't seen cousins. Right, well, we're well, so well, let's forget chimp, then. <sighs> My dad said, uh, over Christmas, that, uh, who do you think you are was on. He said, oh, why don't you do that? I said, because it's, it's looking up dead people. There's cousins who I don't even talk to. Yeah, true. I've, I've, I've no idea. It annoys me when they cry about their great-great-grandmother. They, they didn't who even know. They were like, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> don't even know them. <laughs> don't even know them. And all it's gonna do is dig up problems, innit? You're yeah. gonna find someone out who did something wrong and you're gonna get the blame for it. I don't wanna know. If my cousin was Einstein, very nice. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that's going to add extra pressure. If your cousin was Einstein, then you really are an underachiever. <laughs> <laughs> no, but do you know what? If he was, I'd know about it. I don't reckon you would know about it. I, I don't it reckon would. your family would be that impressed with Einstein. They would have stayed in touch. He was they? always the weird one with the scruffy hair and his tongue out. Yeah. Nah, uh, I reckon uh, the stuff we know is enough now, and all we tend to do mm. is uh, find problems. All the mysteries still in the world. The mind-body problem. What a mm. prick. Mm. How to save the world. Yeah, but we know, are we? We know it's dying. We don't know how to fix it. Not yet, we don't. Turn your lights off. But then we didn't- You turn yours off. Just <laughs> get sick of it. Leaflets through the door all the time. Turn your eating off. Turn the lights off. Living like a mole. <laughs> <laughs> I love his little internal dialogues out loud. They're fantastic. The little discussions he has with himself. Oh, I can't wait till he's old. That's going to be amazing. Us three, when we're about 75, 80 of these, he's fucking moaning. Oh, we're in a, we're in a little home together. I <laughs> just suck. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell! Oh, Carl! Do you remember when you were 73? No, do I fuck? <laughs> Tell us the tic tac I need to do again. <laughs> ah, oh, what a fucking useless bunch of cunts! <laughs> Well, that's about it for the Ricky Gervais Guide to the Human Body. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learnt something. Um, I know Carl didn't. <laughs> Um, next one, the final one in this series is the Ricky Gervais Guide to the Earth. Carl, are we going to do any more guides or? I think this, that we've covered the main stuff you need to know. Yeah. It was good doing the guides though. I like I, 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 I like the attempt of, um, learning. <laughs> <laughs>
I remember our early ambition was to actually be educational as well as hopefully entertaining, and, and I feel perhaps at times we've perhaps slightly shortchanged listeners in terms of what they're learning. Well, they're not learning anything because also, um, even as, uh, you know, compared to Carl, we, we are educated, mm. but we're guessing a lot of the stuff, and he flummoxes us, for, you know, sometimes. Yeah. I mean, it, it was fun trying to be pompous and professorial enough just to just to fight Carl's ignorance. I think we've learned more new words from Carl than we've learned anything else. Yeah. There's yeah. been a lot of the made-up words, perhaps more than ever before. Mm. And also so some of the most abstract um, conversations I think we've ever had. I mean, Carl's, as he gets older, becomes more and more he, um, arrogant and confident. He said a new one to me the other day. Um, there was a problem downloading uh, one of the guides on iTunes, and uh, he said... Um, They've added to the fuckerage. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good. Yeah. So, till the next time, it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Goodbye. And Carl Pilkington. Bye.